My name is Terry Gabbard and I'm the drama teacher at Audrey Kell High School. Well, I started teaching um, 17 years ago. I started teaching in Florida. I, I taught in middle school and then a high school. Uh, then moving to Charlotte, I taught at Community House Middle School, which is right across the street. And then I moved over to AK. Theater for me was my haven. It was a group of friends. It was a diverse group of people that supported each other, that we were doing something together. We were working as a team to create something special. That part of my high school experience was essential to the person I am. I think my attitude when I first came to Audrey Kell was that these kids, they can really do some incredible things and, and I'm gonna dedicate myself to that. One thing that Mr. Gabbard and I knew that we wanted to do is that we wanted to be synonymous with the best. We want our audience to enjoy themselves and we want our kids to really get something out of it. My first musical that I directed at AK was 42nd Street. <laughs> It's a tap dance show, it's, it's really difficult, it has a lot of sets, a lot of moving parts. And I remember proposing this to students and to parents and they basically gave me like this crazy look. And I said, no, we're gonna do this, we're gonna be here on Saturdays, we're gonna get a choreographer in here, we're gonna learn to tap dance. Most of my students didn't know how to tap dance and uh, that year we have a local um, musical theater competition called The Bloomies and we just swept The Bloomies that year. Went from a program who's doing a handful of shows and um, working with a, a small budget and a small parent force. It seems like every year we kind of added, you know, 10 more parents who really want to do stuff. I first started working with AK Theater in 2014. That's the year that Terry Gabbard wrote the play Our Place and it got published and it won all these awards. And that's the same year that our musical 42nd Street won a, a ton of Bloomy Awards here in Charlotte. And everyone said to me, this is it. It'll, it'll never get better than this. This is the ultimate year for AK Theater. We won not only the Bloomies, but we also won the North Carolina Theater Conference One Act Play Festival. It was kind of like we, we won everything that there was to win locally and so it, that was really motivating. Obviously what we're doing was working. When we, we look to our administration, we look to our parents, and we look to our students and say, this is what we want for you. We want to keep raising the bar. Um, and the buy-in that we get back is like, okay, let's do it. Competition is a little bit tricky when you think about theater because you know, we teach our students that theater's about community and theater's about working together and creating art and telling stories. Uh, but we also have to recognize the competitive nature of the business. I totally appreciate the argument that theater doesn't have to be competitive. I, I, I totally see the relevance in that and there's beauty in just theater as an art form. The fact is, is that competition pushes yourself to be better and not just be better than that school or be better than that school or, or that show or whatever. It pushes yourself to be better than you were last year. I'm always aware that the work I'm doing is gonna be critiqued, it's gonna be judged, it's gonna be scored. And I think that that keeps me motivated. Uh, I think the, the second year I was there, 2016, uh, he and I, was the, it was the first year we submitted for the International Thespian Festival. So I've known about the ITF Festival since I was in high school, back in the, in the late 90s, you know, I knew about it. And, and that was something, it was always kind of this shining beacon, it was something out there that was kind of out of reach for, for certainly my high school program. And for the first 12 or so years of teaching, it was something that really wasn't, wasn't something that I felt I could, I could get to. I mean, the International Thespian Festival is the pinnacle event for the organization and for thespians around the world. Many states have gone through district and regional competitions before you even get to the state festival or the chapter festival to then advance to the international festival. So it's a pretty unique honor. We attended he and I, just because we had, we had attempted to do the International Thespian Festival twice. So we attended the festival last summer just to kind of get an idea of what it was all about. Both of them, like their eyes would light up when they talked about their week at the festival and how great it was and how inspiring it was to be with like students and educators from all across the country. And um, last summer, when they came back from the festival, they said, yep, let's, let's do it. We're gonna do puffs. And the parents once again said, okay, here we go. 
So Puffs, um, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gabbard, he got really excited. And that's the thing that you got to know about this guy is that when he gets a hold of something, he obsesses over it. Almost to the point that it's like nauseating and annoying and I just want him to stop. Puffs is a story about being an underdog. And it's about the kids that, that don't get all the attention from the teachers and that don't that aren't good at sports, and they aren't good at, you know, they just kind of bleed into the background. They're not noticed. And so I think that there's a lot of theater kids that feel that way. I was a, a serious doubter. Um, you know, when, when he kind of presented that, I said, um, I mean, I think we should maybe, you know, look at something else. And he's like, no, 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 you have to like watch this. I think this will be perfect for the theater crowd at the International Thespian Festival. I think these kids will love it. I think it is, I think it is the show. I think it will, it will do great. And I was like, okay. And that's how it all came to be. We had to go all in um, and we did, <laughs> we did. My name is Rachel Rudolph and I played Susie Bones and a handful of other characters in Puffs. My name is Quint Hill, and I played Cedric and Mr. Voldy in Puffs. I am Elias Francis, and I played Oliver Rivers in Puffs. Rachel is, is one of the most professional actresses I've ever worked with. Every rehearsal, she's ready to go. She's prepared. She's, she's off book. Um, and she's, she's enthusiastic about what she, she wants. <laughs> work ethic and having professionalism is very important, but I think that something that's also very important when it comes to acting is not just being easy to work with, but being willing to collaborate with other people. And I think that that's what Puffs is about. Rachel's family has always been really involved in our program. Her older brothers went through the program, and so she kind of was one of those kids that was in middle school while her brothers were in high school. and so she kind of knew that she wanted to be involved. The second that I thought, I want to do that, I want to do theater at Audrey Kell, was at the Blue Me Awards when Audrey Kell was performing We're In The Money from 42nd Street. It was just this moment where I was like, yes, Audrey Kell Theater, I, I had my heart set on it, like that's what I wanted to do. And having my brothers be so involved in the community and in um, the department did help me and watching them grow and then getting to sort of follow in their footsteps just meant a lot to me. So Quinn is just, is a, he's a steadfast rock in our production. I mean, he's, he's just awesome, always there, always doing what he needs to do. And it's just, you couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better student. Thank you, thank you. Now gather round. Come on, don't be shy. Welcome to the past. I, I, we get it, I get at school 7, 10, 7, 15 every day. And then depending on how long rehearsal lasts, it, I'll get out of school from the earliest 5.30 to the latest will be like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. So trying to balance that with, with rehearsals can be very hard sometimes. And sometimes it can lead to, you know, sleepless nights and stuff like that. Well, obviously, you know, Always worried about Quint, always worried that he's taken on too much, um, and that he's not taking care of himself. He takes care of everybody else. He, he, he's driven, um, but you worry. I mean, you worry about what you're asking these kids to do on top of all the other things they have to do, on top of just being a teenager. And so yeah, I mean, I, I worry about him because I don't think that he realizes when he's being overwhelmed. And it was Friday night and I really just, I went all in. I was so in it and I wasn't thinking about, you know, myself. So then after the show, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, like, my, I go extremely lightheaded and, and I'm starting to see stars and everything is getting kind of blurry. And I was like, a, I was in so much pain, I was about to faint. So we went all the way to the ER, we ran some tests, and he, we figured out that I was just very, 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 very dehydrated. I had really, really overworked myself performing, 
and I didn't even realize kind of what I was feeling. I mean, I, th I think Quint has an incredible amount of resilience, and I think, that, I think that we all get to kind of a breaking point where we just can't deal anymore. I wanted to have every single chance I could to perform the show. I loved the show so much, and I just, I couldn't bear the thought of, of not of missing a performance or missing those last two performances because I overworked myself. Um, and, and I was very conscious of the fact that I didn't want to overwork myself again, so I took very, very, very good care of myself the next two days. I was really excited to give Elias the role because I think he earned it. He put in his dues, I mean, he was a senior now, and I think it was his time, and so he brought a real uh, genuine energy to his character. I have always wanted to be an actor. What algebra is? <laughs> I'd like to stay in this class, please. Um, finally being in a production and finally getting to, you know, feel that audience and go through that actual rehearsal process um, that I dabbled in because I was in theater, but I, it was never to that extent. So Elias is definitely one of those kids that needs a reason to show up to school. I mean, he just he just does. It's, it's been a struggle for him. You know, sometimes it, it may be hard to worry about high school things uh, when you're worried about your mom. My mom does have stage four breast cancer. Um, it definitely, I don't know, just having it over my head throughout school, it um, definitely might get my mood down, especially being in a place um, that I didn't feel like I really wanted to be in the first place. Um, yeah, that being over my head didn't really help. But as far as um, being into Puffs, um, I just felt such a community from the beginning. For my senior year, I would say this, I wouldn't ask for any other play to be not only my first play ever, but the play to also send me off into like the world of me actually becoming an actor. So yeah, it was pretty cool. At the first read-through, it was like magic. I think that everyone already had their impressions down, everyone had great chemistry with each other, and the show never really felt like a frustrating rehearsal process. It never felt stressful, it never felt like hard work. It was just three months of pure fun with people who really cared about what they were doing. The, one of the most unique things about this is there weren't any struggles which is a weird thing for, for those of us in the theater world. There's always, it was always fun. It was literally always fun to do the show. The buy-in from the kids was so strong and the enthusiasm for what we were doing was, was palpable that it never got old. They would rehearse even when they didn't have to. They were off book like two and a half months out. <laughs> the show was early December. I think they were off, all of them were off book like in, October. Having that happiness and having that willingness to work hard and collaborate with others is very essential to the show, the heart of the show, but also the rehearsal process. The chemistry of all of us was just so, it was just so comforting. We had um, a group chat without Mr. Gabbard, sorry Mr. Gabbard, where we would uh, play Club Penguin every night. We also had this, this thing called Slurpent Work. Um, where we would go get frozen custard and then we'd go to the top of a parking deck and just dance or as we would like to call it twerk because you know we'd slurp the ice yeah okay I'm, not, I'm done explaining it but um, all those little inside jokes and all those little things that we did were really important in spreading positivity and happiness and friendship and getting to know each other. There's something about the show brings together the people that are in it um, like a close-knit family um, and it was, it was a blessing to see that happen to us as well. The message of, of the play goes beyond just being a parody of that source material. The message of the play is about that the best thing to be is just kind. There's not a lot of plays that celebrate kindness the way that Puff celebrates kindness. When it comes to the run of the show, our opening night, I don't think anyone in the cast felt unprepared. It was the first show that I've ever been in, in which leading up to the show and Tech Week, despite the amount of costumes and props and cues and entrances and exits, we all felt like we knew everything. 
when I heard those audience reactions for the first time um, on our show date, I like, I felt something inside of me that I never felt. Um, it was a joy to watch. That show is so much fun. It's, it's funny and it's um, heartwarming. And, um, you know, like I, I watched it as an audience member and it was just purely entertaining. I think our runtime when it's all said and done is like almost three hours. <laughs> Just because you you add so much time for audience laughter, because you're supposed to hold for laughter, because you don't want them to miss, miss the next joke. Add 30 minutes alone for laughter. That's the kind of show Puffs is, and that's what happened at our stage at Arjakel in, in December. I remember the last show. Um, I told myself, like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna cry. We're not gonna cry, you know? It was fun. I'm not, I'm not gonna cry. And then, we spent some time, you know, striking the set and putting away our costumes. And then the stage was empty. It was bare, just dust. But to take it all down and see it all gone like that, like, that was something that definitely made us all emotional. So we all sat on the stage together in a circle and, and we talked, and we just kind of talked to each other on that last night. And then we all just started bawling, pretty much. There wasn't anyone who wasn't crying. And we all ran around in a circle and just kind of talked about what puffs meant to us. In, in the show, the, there's what's called a, a puff hug. And it's just when all the puffs just decide to like hug each other, basically. And you know, I had friends in that cast who I had never seen cry before until then. Finishing our run with a puff hug was, was really, really special. They really, they really loved each other. That's a moment that frozen in time that that really matters, and it, I, I will carry that with me forever. There was a lot of people constantly um, speaking on the International Thespian Festival. They definitely got me like really feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't, can we actually make it? Mr. Gabbard, the kids, everybody involved in that production, they did everything in their power, in their own control to get selected. When we, as a collective group, found out about going to the festival, I was in a practice room with um, Will and Quint, and then our sound manager, Abi, came in and said, we're going to the festival. So I ran back out into the auditorium, and there everyone was hugging and crying, and we all had to sit down for a couple seconds and listen to Mr. Gavard give the whole spiel about the festival. The fact that this was Audrey Kell's third time trying to go, um, was really special. It was just so much fun. I remember sending texts to people who weren't there being like, we're going to the festival. It was, it was the most incredible thing. I mean, it, it, to, be, to know that we were able to, to have this, to get to do this experience again, to get to do this show, and we get to do this for the, for the audience that needs to see this show, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And I finally got an email that said, congratulations, and I went over and I, I grabbed Brian, I showed it to him, gave him a big hug, and then, um, and then I just let everybody know and, and just screams and cries and, and hugs, and I mean, it was, it was all of that. And um, the, the lead up, it, I mean, it was, it was pretty excruciating to wait, but the payoff, I mean, that moment, I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, I remember in February, you know, we were so excited about um, going to Indiana and the, the kids were all super excited about it. And, you know, we were beginning to think about fundraising and planning. I was trying to order costume things and props and we couldn't get anything from China because their factories had shut down. So I remember thinking about that and hearing um, reports, you know, on NPR about how people were, you know, sheltering in place. And I remember, like, you know, listening to the radio, thinking, "Oh, that's really, that's really terrible." When I heard about this pandemic happening and the fact that it was closing down, like literal cities, ITF was definitely the first thing on my mind. And by that time, it was early March, and Rachel said that in a, in a group chat, she came into my room and she said, Mom, 
Sydney Hip just said, you guys, what if this coronavirus thing cancels the festival? Like, you know, would, would that really happen? And um, I think I gave an answer like, oh, that's, that's June, it's fine, it's fine, that, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't happen. You know, we're talking about June here, so we all completely doubted that it would affect, you know, Puffs at all. Um, you know, and, until it did. Finding out that um, the festival was canceled was something that I, it's still hard to like believe. And we weren't necessarily shocked when the news came out, but that didn't take away from how bad it hurt. There was still a little, a little bit of hope, Gabbard saying that we might be able to film it. Um, I emailed Dr. Chilcutt, who's the arts um, assistant superintendent of CMS schools. Terry, I'm sorry for taking so long to get back to you. I wanted to talk to anyone who could give guidance on the topic. At this point, all schools, with the exception of those delivering meals, are to remain closed until further notice. Given that directive, I don't think it's possible at this time. So this was my proposal I sent to perform it in June and record it and, and have it sent to uh, the ITF festival uh, that way. So. That was, that was the final no, and that was, that was when I had to tell the kids, we're not doing the show. Rachel was sitting there in the living room going through her text, and she was like, oh my gosh, they canceled the ITS festival. And um, she just cried. And I wanted to cry too. I mean, I, I felt so bad. I mean, I, I knew it was going to happen, but you can know something is going to happen, and then when you actually hear that it has happened, it feels like a punch in the gut. Those kids really, really could have had a lot of fun and got to meet a lot of new people at that festival. And um, Audrey Kell could have had its, its chance to, to show the world what we do with our, our program, and it was just, you know, gone. Once we had to close the show, we had to store all of our stuff. And Puffs is a production that has hundreds and hundreds of props. Um, the, the prop work in Puffs is, is more complex than any show I've ever done. And so we stored all of the Puff stuff at Rachel's house. Having it up there as a constant reminder is definitely bittersweet because sometimes I like to go up there and just remember what was and remember the people putting on the costumes and the people playing with the props, but another part of me misses it a lot. And having it as a constant reminder isn't always the best thing. And now having all the props and costumes up there, it's just like a shell. It's a shell of a show. It's a weird feeling because there was something within me that made me feel like I'm letting the students down because Puffs isn't happening, which doesn't make sense because it's completely out of my control, but I struggle with that. I struggle with, with realizing that, that it's not happening and it's, there's literally nothing that anybody can do. I measure my life with what the next show is. I mean, that, that's, been, that's, that's the outline of my life. The outline of my life is this show, then this show, then this show. And all the good things that become, that fill, fill in those brackets between show A and show B. And now there's a void there. Was Puffs worth the heartbreak? Was Puffs worth the heartbreak? Hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Oh, it's, it's absolutely worth it. Absolutely. I think it was worth the heartache. The lessons I learned and the friendships I made and the pure joy that I felt while performing the show, it wasn't worth trading. It isn't worth trading. I've been really thinking of throughout this whole like heartache and annoyance that this isn't like actually happening, but 
I feel like you have to think of the good things. It's not, it's not easy to say goodbye to something that you love so much. And when you created it with such an amazing group of people, but you have to say goodbye to it separated from them, it stings a little. I'm very blessed to have, to have done the show and had the experience that I had with, with my fellow castmates. But not only castmates, you know, my best friends. I feel like the friendships that all these kids made, I mean, that's the important part. Like, the, the process is the important thing. I, I, don't, I don't think anybody would trade that experience for the world. Puffs is far more worthy than, than this, this heartache warrants. I mean, it really is worth it, 100%. A lesson for everyone, especially students losing their show, is that there are people that are losing their jobs. There are people that are losing family members. So losing a show hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much as those other people are hurting. You, you want to grieve the loss of the things that we lose as, as theater students. You want to grieve that, but then, you're, but then you don't know if you can. And I think that that's, that's something that I've, that I've struggled with. My wife is in healthcare, and I know that, that her work is, is really important right now and, and that, that the things that are going on are literally life and death, and I'm sad because my play didn't go on. What theater teaches kids is perseverance. There's a greater story out there and there's something that is affecting the entire world. And so we have to ask ourselves, okay, am I allowed to be sad today? And if, and if so, how long am I gonna be sad about this? When I, when I get back to it, when, when we are back in rehearsal, the next show that I do, every day is gonna be fun. I just, I just, I just hope that I don't get wrapped up in either the competition that I'm working on or whatever the final product needs to be that I, that I don't appreciate being in rehearsal, building something, working on something, I just, I just, I just wanna remember that.